right, greetings, folks. <clears throat> Welcome. We're going to be looking at um, the Toon Boom Harmony One notes. Um, we're just going over very, very basic stuff. What is this box to make a new scene? What do we do when we get into our scene? So, um, one thing that I dislike about the word scene is that I think of uh, a harmony scene is much more analogous to a Maya project. Um, is typically, um, let's see, do I have anything in here? No. Okay. So we'll come back to that point in a second. Anyway, making a new scene. So there's just really some basics. Where is it going? So if I make this, I'm going to be making, in this case, let's call it name. I'm going to be making that name scene in my documents. It's asking me what my camera size is. Typically the default right here, 1080p24 is what we need. So that's all good. Um, and then so you can see here on the notes, um, location, where are we making this file, camera size, how big is the scene, and then the frame rate, which is the number of frames displayed in a second of animation. Typically we leave it at 24. Okay, so we got all that, we can create a scene. And then it'll lag and then there's our scene okay so what do we got in here we got the select tool so the select tool works like the lasso tool in Photoshop so you can click and drag and make a lasso selection we got the brush tool and the pencil tool which I'll cycle back to in actually let me do them now I don't want to cycle back to them so the brush tool I'm gonna just I have my black over here Make my brush pretty big. So there's my brush. Okay. So you'll see here that in the notes, I try and make it clear. A brush, the brush tool strokes the boundaries of a shape, which is then filled with color. Stroke is on the outside of the shape. So basically what I've done here is when I was painting, the size of my circles denoting where the outside of my shape is, and then once I'm done making my shape, it just leaves those boundaries, fills it in with black. So if I press K, which we'll talk about strokes more in the future, but you can see the blue lines are on the outside. Whereas if I take my pencil and I draw with my, whoops, here, make this thicker. But if I draw with my pencil and I press K, you'll see that, well, it doesn't really look that different on these brush strokes, you can see the blue is on the outside. On this, the blue line is the inside, and then there is a thickness around it with whichever color um, that I have selected, in this case, black. Okay, so why does that matter? The size of the thickness for a pencil stroke is editable. So that's why the stroke lines for pencils are really useful, because you can go select a pencil stroke, scroll down here, and we'll be talking more about this as we go on, but I always like to bring this up just as an aside. And then you can just change this after the fact, and now this pencil stroke, same line, different thickness. So we can change this thickness as we need to. So typically, pencil tool is great, brush tool has its uses too. Try them both out, see which works better for uh, your brain. Now, the shape tools, they're, it's better to know about the pencil stroke thing uh, before I talk about this because these are just straightforward things. It's a square, rectangle, a circle, that kind of stuff, a straight line. So great, okay, cool, got it. So these are pencil strokes. So if I grab these, I can also change the thickness of my pencil stroke here after the fact. So that's pretty great. So you can change the thickness of these shapes. Oh my goodness, I don't have the um, extend exposure on here. That's fine. Um, okay, so this is just drawing and such. How do we move around in here? This might be useful to you. So 
zooming in, zooming out, are not the keys you're used to in uh, Maya, nor the, the keys you're used to in Photoshop. It is the one and the two key are zoom in and zoom out. So one, I believe, zooms out. Yeah, two zooms in. Why? I don't know. They wanted to be weird. So, oh, and the, but the space bar, the space, uh, the hand tool rather, with the space bar, that is the same. So that is good. All right. So for today's assignment, we only need to touch on a few different things. Um, I will need to go add extend exposure on here. So let's start with making a new color. So I'm gonna make a color, let me go, let me delete this. Okay, add and close. So I'm gonna make a color over here. So here's all my basic colors. Press the plus sign to add a new one. Change new zero, I'm gonna call this background color. And what I'm gonna do is change this background color and let's make it, I don't know, like this nice like lime green. Cool. Close that. So now what you'll notice is this gray box here is just the size of the camera. So I can't like paint in this box. But what I can do is go make a rectangle that's slightly bigger than the camera. And then I can fill it. And there's your background. Okay. And I've been doing this on this drawing layer that's here. So this will be my BG. Okay, so we have one layer here with a single frame in time. So let's start getting into this a little bit more deeply. Well now, let's stick with what we already understand. So let's make a new layer. In this case, we want a specific kind of layer. So we want to add a drawing layer. You'll see that there's this plus, minus, and then two specific uh, layer addition icons. That's because you mostly are working with drawing layers and peg layers. So just there's a there's a button for it add drawing layer hey what are you trying to add on this this will be my letters add and close so what am i doing on my letters layer so grab my pencil uh, make this a little thinner and i'm going to make a new color and my new color will be letters let's grab this and uh Do something like that. Okay. And so I'll start by, oops, that, I'm using my mouse. All right. So you, you may wanna increase your center line smoothing if you're, <laughs> if you're bad at this like me. <laughs> okay, cool. So. What do we actually have going on here? We have one frame at frame one that says C. We got another layer with another frame at frame one that's the background green. So how long do we want these to exist? So what we're talking about is the word exposure. Okay, so how do we want this exposed? Well, for starters, we want the background there the whole time. So. Um, I'm gonna click in the very last frame in the background layer. I'm gonna right click and do extend exposure. So now what I've said is please display this, this drawing on every frame between now and frame 60, which is my whole animation. Great, okay. How long do we want this letter to be there? Well, let's review. So our frame rate is 24 frames per second, so in my estimation, half a second is probably good for each letter that I'm going to add into my name on the screen. So that means I want this C to be all alone for 12 or half of a second, 12 frames. So how can you make something extend exposure? So there's the option I already showed you. You just go to that frame, right click, extend exposure to that frame. So that's one way. Another way you could change exposure, if you select the frame and you start pressing the plus key on the keypad, 
you can add frames one at a time like that or you could go under this exposure menu right above extend exposure and change it set exposure to 12 and then it'll display that for 12 frames okay so we got a letter and we got a background the letters for 12 frames so when I want to go make my 13th frame, well, this is where I'm going to add the H to my name. But my C is gone. What do I do? So some of you might think, oh, we should just have this extend the exposure for 60 and then add a new layer. Great. That's not, that's cool, but that's not really how we want to do this. Because I already had that brought up to me. I'm like, sure. I mean, I guess, but that, it's fine but it doesn't show me that you understand um, doing stuff on the, the timeline. So let's look at the next thing on our notes. So we've added color, we've added a new drawing layer. Let's activate our onion skin. So this allows us to see what's going on uh, frames ahead and behind where we're currently working. Controlled by the onion skin boundary, which is on the top of your timeline. So let's turn on onion skin down here. So I'll turn this on, show onion skin. And then what you'll see is that on frame 13, make sure you select it on the right layer. So it's showing me a highlight or a ghost image of where my C is. So I can go ahead, draw in another C. And then also add my H. And so I'll right click this, set exposure to 12, not 121, hit OK, boom, here we are, CH, C H R. Now mine is going to perfectly fit within 60 frames. Uh, whoops. Oh man, I went to go make tea before class and I forgot about it, rip. So this is allowing me to see where I've come from as I write this out. I want to point out I did increase the center line smoothing to make this react less bad to my horrible handwriting with my mouse. All right, and I'll extend my exposure and then one more go. And that gets you this, boom, done and dusted. So that's what you need to do. Have letters appearing. It doesn't need to be half a second. It could be longer, it could be shorter, but you need to have letters appearing one at a time. Um, let's say no shorter than, uh, than six frames between them. Um, that would still be insanely fast, but um, yeah, and if you need to extend your timeline, it's just really as simple as grabbing this red this red bookend here and drag it out to give yourself more time. So that part, not on the notes, but not crazy hard. Just grab the bookend, move out the end to where you want the end. And if you left yourself too much space at the end, you can always clamp it back down also. All right, so go write your name.